Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tuesday Tip where in this video we're going to be briefly covering BMX frame geometry. My buddy Mike Feedy called me up this morning with an idea for BMX shorts or shorter BMX videos meant to be straight to the point and concise on whatever the subject might be. So with that being said, let's get into talking about BMX frame geometry starting with the head tube. The head tube on your BMX frame has two different measurements that come with it. A measurement in height and a measurement in angle. The angle is a measurement of how steep or how mellow your head tube is. It's basically how steep or mellow it is in this direction of the whole tube and its angle. The measurement height is self-explanatory in how tall your head tube is in itself. The head tube angle on your frame has a gigantic impact on how your bike controls and feels while turning. And I feel like this is a perfect place to mention that I do have another video talking way more in depth about all of these things and their measurements and what they mean. And I'll have it linked up here here, as well as in the description down below, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as we move through this video. Moving on from there, we can talk about the top tube of a BMX frame. This is the top tube of a BMX frame, the tube on the top of the frame that spans from the head tube all the way to the seat tube. It has a measurement in inches, and this is something that can have an impact on how your bike feels, and certain styles and types of BMX riding are known to utilize different lengths of top tube. So this is one that you definitely want to learn more about. Then moving down, we have the bottom tube, clearly. This one also spans from the head tube, but this one goes to the bottom bracket tube, and this is one that you really don't have to worry about whatsoever, as its length is something that we really don't even advertise with BMX frames, and it's something that is dependent on a lot of other variables of BMX frame geometry, so you don't even have to think about the bottom tube. Moving back from there, we've mentioned the seat tube already. There's two different measurements that come with the seat tube. There is a seat tube angle as well as a seat tube height, otherwise known as standover. The standover of a BMX frame can have impacts on tricks or rigidity of a frame, but the standover is largely regarded as something that is more of a matter of personal preference when looking at BMX frame geometry. The differences in seat tube angle are also something that are known to be a matter of personal preference in BMX frame geometry, although the differences in seat tube angle measurements combined with the differences in head tube angle measurements can have an impact on the feel of the length of your top tube, but that is something that we will cover later but then moving on from there, we've got our bottom bracket tube. And the aspect of BMX frame geometry that goes with the bottom bracket tube is the bottom bracket height. This is a measurement in inches, and it's the measurement of how much higher your bottom bracket is than your axle to axle wheelbase. Moving on from there, we have got our chain stays and our seat stays. There's four different tubes that make these up. And when it comes to the seat stays, there's no real measurement that goes along with these. This is just like the bottom tube in that this measurement is dependent and relies on all of the other aspects of BMX frame geometry and is not something that we typically manipulate or control in our frames. But there is something about this that you might think about whenever you're getting a BMX frame and that is the brake mounts. It might have brake mounts attached to it. They might be welded on, they might be removable, but it is something to consider, especially if you think you might run brakes in the future or obviously if you run them now. Moving down from there, we've got our chainstay tubes. These ones are huge in BMX frame geometry. The chainstay is something that depending upon how long or short it is, can mean that the frame is either made for a certain style of riding or made for another style of riding, just dependent on the length. This means that it has a huge impact on how the bike feels while it's being ridden, as well as the different types of riding that it's suited for. Moving on from there, we've got our dropouts. Our dropouts are right here on the frame. There's one on each side, and they connect the seat and chainstay tubing of either side of the frame together. Our dropouts have one aspect of BMX frame geometry that is usually an afterthought whenever picking out a BMX frame or considering BMX frame geometry, just because there's usually other aspects of BMX frame geometry that take precedence over the depth of a dropout, and that is exactly it. It is how deep the dropout is and basically the range in which your axle can move in your dropout to give you adjustment in your rear wheel for chain tension and other things we won't get into in this video. Just know that this is measured in inches and it's really not something that you're gonna think about unless you have a whole bunch of different frames to choose from that are all the exact same geometry and the dropout depth is the thing that makes the decision 
for you. So with all that, I haven't included any in-depth explanation or frame geometry measurements or how specific measurements can lend themselves better to different styles and types of riding. And I haven't done so because I already have a video that goes super in-depth on BMX frame geometry. You can find that right over here. And in that video, I cover all aspects of frame geometry as well as how they're measured, what those measurements are, and how those measurements and the different ends of the spectrum with them can impact the way a bike feels as well as different styles and types of riding that is better suited for. I wanna thank you guys for being here. I hope that you learned something in this video. If you did and you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button down below. Check out Mike's channel as well for his shorts video. Thank you for watching and hopefully we'll see you tomorrow for another one. Goodbye.